The Gillespie algorithm is the original stochastic modeling method. It employs random numbers to simulate individual reaction events and is thus a chemically exact method of simulating the dynamics for a biochemical system. A Gillespie model begins with an enumeration of the reactions that can occur in an initial concentration of each species present in the system. Though typically the number of molecules you simulate is far fewer than the number in a cell, you can think of this as the simulation of the molecular history of one cell. It will simulate a random series of reactions just as they might occur in reality. For example, suppose we were modeling the michaelis menten kinetics of an enzyme binding to a substrate and converting it to a product. Using Gillespie, we would simulate individual random reaction events. For this, it employs two random numbers. One number chooses the time of the next event, and the other chooses the next reaction. The history of events occurring in this theoretical cell is then recorded. Typically, you simulate many of these traces. Since this is all based on random choices of events, every trace will come out differently. However, if we do enough of these trace simulations, patterns will emerge in the data. In the limiting case of many molecules, like thousands, the results of the stochastic simulation will often approximate the results of a differential equation model. In other cases, they capture behavior that is lost in the less granular simulation. The first step in implementing Gillespie is to write out all the possible elemental reactions that can happen. Each reaction has a probability associated with it, and the choice of next event is weighted by its probability. After this initial setup that is specific to your system, you run the simulation. For each reaction in the trace, it will choose two random numbers. The first number is to randomly pick the next reaction that will occur. This choice is random, but it is weighted based on the individual rates of all reactions in the system. The second number is used to pick when the next reaction will occur. After it has chosen its reaction, the algorithm adjusts all the concentrations of the individual components to account for whatever reaction took place. This process of reaction choosing and updating is iterated to create a timeline for a single chain of random events until some preset length of time has elapsed. Typically you run this simulation from the starting conditions many times. With a large list of trace data, you can combine the data in various ways to represent the scope of behaviors expected for the system. For many models, the result will be the same as an ODE model, but you get additional information about the heterogeneity in the system and a more precise model of what's going to happen. In other cases, you may notice effects in the stochastic model that are not apparent in the differential model uh, at all and are manifested in the real system. Let's try the example of michaelis menten kinetics. The first step is to write out all the elemental reactions. For reversible reactions, the forward and reverse reactions are two distinct reactions. So we'd have an E plus S to ES step, its reverse reaction, and then ES to E plus P. You could also, of course, expand this into more intermediate states if you wished. For example, you could include steps of ES going to EP prior to its dissociation. If the reaction isn't heavily exothermic, then you may also wish to capture the reverse reaction of E plus P going to EP. Suffice it to say, the first step is to write out the reactions. The next step is to identify all your distinct species. Some of these, like E, S, and P, are single molecules, while other species, like E, S, will be complexes. So in this case, there are four distinct species whose concentrations we need to follow. Next, we must describe how to update the counts of the various species if a reaction occurs. If one of the enzymes and one of the substrates bind to one another and form an ES complex, as shown in the first equation, then the total number of E will decrease by 1, S will decrease by 1, and ES will go up by 1. This is analogous to the stoichiometry matrix we saw in flux balance analysis. We already identified that in total there are four distinct species in our system, so there are four columns in our matrix and three reactions, so three rows. That isn't a critical point to understand in terms of how the algorithm works, but I point it out now to show the relatedness of the two methods in this regard. 
The last thing we need are rate expressions. More accurately, they are equations that describe the probability that the reaction will occur. Fortunately, they look the same as elemental rate equations. So it's just a rate constant multiplied the, by the number of each reactant, such as K1 times E times S for our first reaction. Let's describe what happens during this simulation. I've made up some initial values for each species. We have 25 E's, 583 S's, 5 ES's, and 13 P's. We could have made these values any integer values. They represent the number of individual molecules or complexes in the system. We also have an initial time, let's say 0 milliseconds. We also had chosen an end time for the simulation at 10 milliseconds. I picked two random numbers between 0 and 1, and I'm going to use those to choose the next time of the next reaction and what reaction occurs. I use these equations to weigh my decision about which reaction goes next. I calculate each one based on the current count of each species, then, pin, then pick one randomly based on my random number weighted by these probabilities. Let's say I chose reaction 2. If this reaction occurs, then I need to examine my update matrix to see what happens to the species. For reaction 2, ES decrements and E and S go up 1. So my new values are 26 for E, 584 for S, 4 for ES. I'll also now update my time to a randomly chosen next value, say 4 milliseconds. In the next step, I do it all again. So let's say it chooses to do an ES over to ES reaction. Then I update my values as negative E, negative S, and plus for ES. And perhaps the next time was 2 milliseconds, so now we were at 6 milliseconds. Then perhaps it does another dissociation of ES complex, and that gets up to 9 milliseconds. Then it does an ES over to E plus P step, and we exceed 10 milliseconds, so the algorithm stops. In practice, we'd set a smaller time interval such that this ran many thousands of times before completing. Throughout this simulation, the algorithm is periodically recording the values for each species such that the output of the simulation is a time trace of each species count at discrete time points. From this data, there are many analyses one might do. Here we plot the count of each species over the progression of this one trace. We can see from this that ES complex quickly achieves a steady state value as assumed by michaelis metten derivations. In practice, the Gillespie algorithm is very time consuming to run. The algorithm is as true to reality as we believe it to be, but if you have many molecules in the system, it becomes impractical to run at this level of detail. Approximations such as tau leaping, amongst others, have been devised to approximate Gillespie while obtaining more realistic runtimes.